Hey guys, Simply Betty here. Today's video has been a few months in the making. I got a new species of wild betta, but I decided not to share them right away. I wanted to make them a nice new planted tank that was set up um, well for a species of fish that enjoys low pH. And then I also wanted to get them happy, get them to spawn and get some cute little babies in there so I could have like this happy ending to the video. I know I could stretch all of that into like four different videos, but I just, I like to be concise sometimes. So here is my new Beta Chinoides. Am I saying that right? Sometimes I don't know. I just pretend like I do. Beta chinoides. They're also fairly commonly known as like a, a cherry betta, red cherry betta. I've also heard the, the name snakehead betta. The name red cherry betta uh, works pretty well, as you'll see. The males are just these beautiful bright red colors. They're a beautiful little species from Indonesia, and here's me unboxing them. I saw these fish available as a captive bred pair from a person in the US, so I went ahead and got them. They're going to be my second pair of mouth brooding bettas, with Macrostoma being my first. I do love my Max, but I also want to try this smaller species. My Max have been really difficult to spawn lately. The pair got to me warm and healthy with an unfortunate amount of duckweed in their bag, which of course I'll remove with surgical precision. The fish look dull here and unhappy, but it's just from the unpleasant experience of being shipped and then opened and stared at by this crazy lady. Their first home in on my fish rack is going to be a really ugly quarantine tank. I use pretty gaudy plastic plants in my quarantine tank just because it's easy to sterilize them afterwards. It's always a good idea to quarantine new fish even if you trust where they're coming from. I acclimated these guys to temperature and then plopped them right in. This whole species, this whole complex are really great jumpers, so I used a plastic wrap and tape as a top to the tank, which is a perfect super ugly topper to a super ugly tank. The fish slowly relaxed and started moving around, judging me for the decor. I had the light on to grab some quick shots, but I like to turn the light off for a day or so just to relax the fish after the stress of shipping. Now I'll go over their planted tank, which I made just for these new wild bettas. I'm just using a plain 10 gallon tank, nothing fancy, which I painted the underside and the backside black. If you've been watching me for a while, you might know that I keep quite a collection of immersed grown aquatic plants, which means that I grow them out of the water. This is a big tray of Anubias nangi and Coffifolia and Nana. And I think I'll be using all of the nangi from this tray. For my substrate, I'm using Florin Volcanit from Brightwell, my sponsor. This is a pH buffering substrate for planted tanks, which basically means that it's gonna help keep my water stable at a lower pH to keep these fish happier and induce spawning behaviors. I'm using this lighter colored substrate because I have it on hand. It's going to be the main bulk of my substrate. I'm putting a lot in too, just to make sure it lasts a long time pH buffering substrates do wear out, so to speak, but I'm predicting that this amount um, should last at least a few years. I'll be having a more detailed video coming up about buffering substrates, what that means, how to use it to lower pH. So if you're wondering what on earth I'm talking about, that video should explain it pretty well. I made a top layer of a darker version of the Florin Volcanit because I think that the darker color and the finer size is just going to complement these little fish better. Hardscape time! I decided on a piece of Malaysian driftwood to stick in there. I get mine from Flip Aquatics. Um, I'll have links down below for anyone looking for any products that I use. For rocks, I thought that some white quartz would look nice on the black substrate. Whenever my husband goes for walks and sees a pretty quartz rock, he saves it for me. So they're special to me, and I think they look really nice on a black substrate. So I put them in there in clumps. Not in any true aquascaping design, but more like clumps of cover to make a shyer species of fish just feel comfortable, and to give the brooding male lots of cozy places to hide. 
I removed all my Anubias from their soil pots and I cleaned up all the roots, which they, it took a while and it was messy, but here are the cleaned up plants. I love me a good bucket of Anubias, guys. I was just going to do Anubias in these tanks, but I decided last minute that that wasn't enough plants. So I busted out some of my Crypt trays. I keep Crypt Lutea and Crypt Florida Sunset. So I spent some time cleaning those up and getting those ready for the tank. I also love me some good buckets of crypts. This tank will be sitting on my rack front ways, so I'm adding my plants based on that view. The first one I'll add to the tank is some of my Crypt Lutea. I like this crypt a lot. It's one of my favorites. It has a finer leaf structure compared to Wenty. So I like the texture that it gives. It's petite, but it's not as petite as something like Parva. You can think of it as one step larger than Crypt Parva. I added them in pretty little clumps around the rocks. I could seriously just call this tank done because I think it looks really pretty, but I want to add some more cover for the fish. I live in a really dry place, so I have to keep spraying down my plants to make sure they don't get crispy. Next, I'll add a bunch of Crypt Florida Sunset, which is a variation of Crypt Wendy. Um, it's, it's thicker and bushier than my Lutea, and it will add a lot of great hiding spots back here in the back and also obscure the sponge filter. I think the tank is looking pretty cool. It's time to add my Anubias. I either glued or tied it to the Malaysian Driftwood piece, or sometimes I weigh the plants down with some plant weights wrapped around the rhizome, and I just set it on top of the substrate. I think that this tank looks pretty nice. It's gonna make a really nice, low maintenance, low pH, soft water tank for these beta chinoides. The whole time I was putting it together, I was being yelled at by my baby. Things take me longer than usual to do nowadays because of this. He's very demanding. And at this point he was only like a month old. I added the 10 gallon tank back to my fish rack and I filled it up slowly so as not to disturb the substrate. If you use planted tank substrates, I highly recommend to fill up your tank for the first time really slowly. My wood piece started floating, oops, so I put a rock on top of it to weigh it down. Sometimes wood pieces uh, need to soak for a while before they'll sink on their own. I cycled the tank pretty quickly to get these fish in, like it only cycled for about a week or so. Um, and how I did that so fast was I used a sponge filter from a healthy tank of mine and I put this in the tank and then I dosed the water with fast start, which is like bacteria food to feed all the different uh, species of bacteria in the cycle and just keep that cycle going and not broken. And then every day I'd also dose the tank with a bacterial starter just on top of everything. And then I'd also fertilize my plants. All of this together is just super fast and thorough. I added the fish and it didn't take long at all before I saw some spawning activity. This guy has a big mouth full of eggs it's neat to see their, their bulging mouths. It's really cute. That's also why I like my macrostoma. It's just funny to see the males with a face full of eggs. I left the male and the female in the tank together since I've, I read a bunch of reports of the, the parents not preying on the fry after the male releases the fry. So I let the male hide comfy among the plants um, until he released. About two weeks later, I could see the little babies swimming around, which was really neat. But by the next day, there were no more babies. The pair spawned again a while later and I decided to remove the male this time and put him in an enclosed space to incubate his eggs. I bought this breeder box um, to place inside of the tank. It has a very fine mesh walls that the fry can't escape from. I very gently, so as not to spook my fish, I managed to slowly catch the male in a net. And then I put in the breeder box and then deposited the male into the little breeder box without taking him out of the water. Cause I was trying to minimize any kind of stress in the hopes that he wouldn't swallow his eggs. Sure enough, it worked. I added some leaves and floating plants into the breeder box to make sure he'd feel nice and secure. He stayed in there for about a week and then he finally released his fry and I've just been picking out the fry as they're on the surface of this little trap. Six little babies, which I just scooped out with a little tiny cup and I moved to this little specimen container. There's one, he's so little. 
I took even more babies out today. You can see them up there in the little specimen container. I must have about 15. I kind of lost track. You can see that I fed them some vinegar eels as one of their first meals. Um, I will also add some baby brine shrimp in. I've been waiting to edit and release this video until I had this happy little ending, and now that I do, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. So I'm happy to be raising a bunch of little betta chinoides fry. Um, this'll be fun. I like this little species. They're pretty neat so far. Oh, he just got one. Good job, dude. I kept the male in his mesh breeder box for about another week after removing all of the fry that he released. I wanted to make sure he fattened back up a little before reintroducing him to the female. Since he went like almost two weeks without eating anything, I really like this little species. They're beautiful, they're fun to look at, they're interesting, and they're not at all shy. Once they got used to me being the giver of the food, then they're just so tame and so cute. Well, I take that back. The male, when he had mouthfuls of eggs, he, he would just hide and disappear for like two weeks, but that's fine. That's cool. I have a pretty young baby too, and sometimes I just feel like hiding for weeks from the world. So what do you think, guys? Would you keep a pair of these betta chinoides or red cherry bettas or snakehead bettas or whatever, you know, if you can find them labeled as? Do you keep them? Have you kept them before? Have you bred them without separating the babies from the parents? Like, have you bred them in a community type setting and not have them like eat all the babies? I'm very curious about that. I want to know. Tell me if you've had success down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.